I am Eileen Lindstrom, and I am speaking English. <laughs> okay, this is English is a little tricky. In Russia, they speak Russian. So I am the Secor International Fellowship in Secondary Education, and I did my student teaching at Gymnasium 24 in Tomsk, Russia. Tomsk is a city located in Siberia, and I went to Siberia in February and March. <laughs> yes, it was cold, and yes, the snow came up to about here on me when I was standing on another six inches of ice. Think that through. So, I did student teaching at Gymnasium 24, and it's a small-ish school. There are about 800 students, ranging from the first form to the 11th form. If we want to convert this to American terms, this is approximately a K-12 school. Gymnasium 24 is very well known within Tomsk. Everyone would say, oh, where are you student teaching? And I said, Gymnasium 24. And they went, oh, they teach English there. Every class at this school is taught in English, with the exceptions of math and, of course, Russian. <laughs> they haven't figured out how to teach the Russian language while using the English language. We're working on it, though. So, I was student teaching, so I taught English to four classes of the seventh form, and that's eighth graders, so I had 13 year olds all about this tall, it's cute. I had about 15 students per class, so very small class sizes. We focused on speaking, listening, reading, and writing, and I taught two different units with two sets of four classes, because the other class got jealous that I didn't work with them for the bulk of my time in Russia. <laughs> so I had to share. So my first unit was about popular arts. So we spoke about popular arts, we listened to radio plays, we read articles about jazz and movies and cinema, and then we wrote about popular arts using my students' favorite form of grammar, passives. <laughs> Passive voice and articles. They were happy campers when I told them it was grammar day. In the beginning of my student teaching experience, I observed my mentor teacher, and I observed other teachers. I had the opportunity to sit on a Russian math class, and while I understood a little bit, it was mostly, look, they're teaching math. The, I also had to, got to talk to other students about life in America. So I talked to all of the fifth form classes about my life, my college, and the first question, or the second they always asked was, do you like Lady Gaga? <laughs> Without fail, they will ask you that. And when I started lead teaching, I was in charge of developing the lesson plans for my students. So I had to, they had to be educational, and of course they had to be engaging. It doesn't work to teach English if all your students are sleeping. So I developed some games for them, and the one they really liked was with practicing articles. I would give them a sentence without any articles, and they would hold up a card depending on the article. They'd say, oh, this one's the, this one's the, I got this one. Or, uh, maybe it's a and. Uh. And they would practice articles, but it's suddenly, it's not boring anymore. It's interesting, and they really like that. So, here's Russia in the winter. I had three goals when I went to Russia. I wanted to teach my, my teaching experience, and this I did by getting up in front of the classroom and interacting with my students. I wanted to improve my classroom management skills, and I did this by observing my mentor teacher, Anne Shukina, and I also observed how my students interacted with me. If they reacted by suddenly getting up out of their seats and yelling at me, clearly it wasn't working. And my third goal was to improve my Russian, which is why I was in Russia. And this I did by speaking with people, because in Tomsk, no one speaks English except for the kids at school. And so my homestay mother, spoke one English word, and that was cake. <laughs> Which is great, except I know the Russian word for cake. So, you know, you can't have a conversation just with the word cake. I tried, it doesn't work. The outcomes of my time in Russia is that I feel incredibly comfortable in front of classes of students and in front of large audiences that look like classes. Thank you. And I've learned really good ways to manage a classroom in really bad ways. Through trial and error, I've learned if I go shush, they kind of laugh a little and then they'll quiet down. If I tell them to be quiet in Russian, they look at me like, oh, she speaks Russian. And then they quiet down also. And I'm also able to comfortably communicate with Russians. I was at a hotel and I was sat chatting with one of the women there and she's like, your Russian's not bad. 
that's a pretty good compliment for me coming from a native speaker. So what I have learned, I've learned different ways to manage a classroom and more importantly I've learned how to teach English. I came to Cornell with the thought I'm gonna be a math teacher, I'm gonna be a math teacher, I'm gonna be a math teacher. So I never, you know, I don't know how to teach English or well, I didn't know how to teach English. I do now. I have practiced it for two months. I'm pretty good at it. Professionally, I know how to set expectations for my students by telling them, you know, this is what's okay, this is what's not okay, and also just by demonstrating the level that I expect out of them. And I know when I need to ask for help from my mentor teacher and when I can trust myself and say, yes, this lesson plan, this is a good idea. And I've also expanded my comfort zone. One does not go to Russia in Siberia in the winter without expanding your comfort zone. <laughs> and without expanding your winter clothing. That's also important. So, the impacts. I have now experienced non-math teaching methods. It is a very rare math class where you read, write, and discuss things other than, do we have to do homework? So I now have a lot more experience teaching students and interacting with students using text, using discussions. I have now have data and topics for academic papers, for classes that I'm in now, for times in the future when I go to graduate school. And I've improved my conversational skills both in Russian but also in English with foreigners. I've learned when I'm talking way too fast for my students and when they don't understand me just because I'm, there's one word in my sentence that they're just hung up on. Professionally, I've gained contacts in Russia, and I've also, this is a resume builder, as every other fellow before me has told do, but this is a great one. Now, the last one, stay in your seats, please. I have a career change coming up. I said I wanted to be a math teacher, and then I went to Russia, and I have been offered a job, and I've accepted, teaching English for English House. It's a private company in Tomsk, Russia, and they do little kids up to businessmen, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, so I will be teaching there come September. And I've also been accepted, or this Tomsk State University wants me to teach uh, English write speaking course and also to be the academic English specialist in writing. So I'm going back to Tomsk in September. <laughs> and in December too, so it's gonna be really cold. I've also gained an immense amount of self-confidence from this. Not only do I know, yes, I can speak Russian, and yes, I can teach English. So I'd like to say thank you to my faculty sponsor, Sidney Posler, my contacts in Russia who made this possible, Vladimir Melnikov and Margarita Kfirvam, and then my site mentor and mentor teacher, Ann Shukina. Those last three are all in Russia, and it's a bit of a commute. So, спасибо большое.